the 1966 Ford Fairlane GT GTA by AMT Ertl. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car builders, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? Where today we are going to be looking at the 1966 Ford Fairlane GT or the GTA Automatic. So before we get, begin this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to know about it. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes, and now let's go down to our Ford showroom and see what's in the box. And now we return to the Ford showroom as we check out the AMT 1966 Ford Fairlane GT GTA. This kit came out by AMT at the end of the 1990s, although this issue is re-released under RC2, which of course came later. Now, what's the difference between a Ford GT and a Ford GTA? Well, one simple thing. The Ford GT is a car with a uh, clutch and a gear stick, and the GTA is the automatic version. You get both transmissions in this kit, so it's really cool. Now, of course, this box has the typical RC2 um, type of artwork on the side, which is just basically a photograph of the model itself. Very kind of blah. Um, now, it's hard to tell here, but this is the 390 cubic inch engine. AMT, I do believe they also had the Ford Fairlane 427 with the hood scoop, but I never got that kit, and I do believe it was quite a limited edition. Although, under RC2, or sorry, under Round 2, we may actually see that kit come out again, if, of course, we haven't already. I haven't really been keeping up too much, but <laughs> anyway, here we have the side of the box, and of course, this is a skill level 2 kit, moderate detail, or sorry, moderate difficulty. For ages 10 and up, you will need glue, you will need paint. And as we can see, RC2 brought this out in 2006, which is pretty much near the end of RC2 as a brand before it got bought up by Round 2. So now let's just take the lid off the box and I can show you simply what's inside here. This kit I've never opened before. Well, I built another one back in the day. So you can see that there's nice big instructions going on here. We've got our decal sheet, which this time I'm going to keep hidden because it's got the paper on it. Our chrome tree, looking so fabulous in its plastic bag. <laughs> and of course we have our car body. And our window glass underneath here. At least they packaged it pretty nicely. There's all our interior components in the bag. Separate door panels, you see that? Very nice nicely done. And our tires, and these tires were neat. They were all built brand new at the back end of the 90s. They actually have a groove in there where you can paint in the red lines or white walls or whatever you need. So very cool. So now let's just put this all back in the box nicely. And we'll start to get into a review of the instructions. And now we look at our Ford GT GTA instruction sheet. And we got this nice illustration here of the car by Kirk Barron. Very good, very well drawn. I always like these kind of things because you could you could color or you could photocopy this or put it in your computer printer and make a copy and then color it in the way you want it to be before you even paint. So they give you this really you know, huge write-up for the 66 Ford Fairlane which uh, you guys can end up reading on your own when you get this model. Then of course we have our important building tips and the safety. And then building tips for the advanced modeler down below. Okay, so we take a look at our first image here. This is our engine assembly, step one. So, of course, it actually tells you the colors to paint everything. So we have Ford Motor Blue for basically this entire motor. 
so you have your intake manifold, your right and left hand cylinder heads, your engine block, and this one is really nice because it has the pistons molded into it as well as the valve ends, or for your rocker ends, sorry. And then your oil pan down here. And then getting into step two, actually, there we go, steps two and three. You can see here we have an automatic transmission for the GTA version, and this is aluminum and glues uh, left to right hand sides. Now, I actually, <laughs> in one of the model contests that I entered in a long time ago, I discovered that the actual transmission, you know how you usually you scrape seam lines and all that, make everything smooth? The automatic does go together in two pieces like this. So, I left a seam line in, but I took it off on the transmission pan. I actually got penalized points for that in the model car show. <laughs> anyway, um, then the other transmission we get is a three-piece. This is a manual transmission for the GT version, and you get your shift linkage in as well. So really nicely detailed. In step three, it shows the uh, valve covers going on, and these are also painted Ford Motor Blue. You get your oil breather, your oil filler, your distributor, yeah, your coil, your oil filter and your fuel pump and then your transmission of your choice gets glued onto the end of the engine block and then in step number four that's where your air cleaner and your carburetor go on as well as your starter motor and your right and left hand exhaust manifolds as well as your um, water pump and the water pump has a nice hose molded into it then you get your fan, your belts and pulleys, and your alternator as well. Alternators would have been fairly recent in this time period, whereas before it would be generators. Okay, so now we get that cool Ford front suspension, sort of the F style. You get, oh, here you're going to put in your inner fenders. You got your upper A arm and then the coil spring goes on top. And I'm not sure on the Fairlane, but I know on other Fords this was actually adjustable up here. You have your shock absorber coming down. Okay, so you get a left and right hand spindle, which with a little bit of engineering you can make your own steerable or posable steering, sorry, with uh, tie rods. You get a nice chassis in here, um, a firewall. So all that would glue together, and then this pops onto here. So this is a cool kit because there's a lot of individually molded pieces. Uh, your engine block would go up in here, sit on the cross member. There's also a transit transmission cross member here. Then the kit supplied tie rods, your left and right hand exhaust pipes with mufflers, and then we get into step seven, which of course shows your rear differential and rear axle with differential gluing together. It's two piece unit. Then you've got your drive shaft, your right and left hand leaf springs and the shock absorbers on the back. Let's go here. So then we have step eight, the engine bay assembly. So now you're getting your radiator wall and your horns and the upper radiator hose as well as a decal going on your radiator. The battery, the old um, bags for your windshield wash washers, and the master cylinder which you go in there for your brakes. Now it's interesting, this is not a power assisted brake. It's an actual uh, non-power assisted so you'd have to push down harder on the pedal. <laughs> Okay, so then getting into here, we've got the on the assembled chassis on the reverse side here, the top, however you want to put this, there's molded in carpet detail. You get a floor console and your choice of the shifters. So one is for the GTA and the other is like a standard gear shift for the GT version. And then your bucket seats with the fronts and backs gluing on. And this is where the interior is really amazing compared to older AMT offerings. Now here in step 10, 
you'll note that you get right and left hand side door panels. You also get a choice of your pedals for, um, of course, your GT version, which would have the clutch pedal in here, the brake and the gas, or your automatic, which would have the brake and the gas. And then you get a back seat, a beautifully molded in dashboard, steering column and steering wheel. So now let's open this up a bit. So for, for your tire and wheel preparation, they say to carefully remove the wheel web with your number 11 hobby blade. Then it has a exploded view of the actual Ford rims, the semi-gloss black going in the back, and of course your Ford emblem in the center here, the Fairlane emblem, would be painted red, uh, tinted red on the chrome. And then you get your wheel assembly here with the outer wheel going through the tire and the backing wheel there. Notice that there's two different hole sizes on these. So one is for a metal axle, goes in the rear, and the other is to snap onto those um, wheel spindles under the chassis. And then here, body assembly 13. We have... <laughs> the body shell going down, the glass going up inside, and these include the sun visors, which is nice. And then there's our wheels snapping on there in the front, and then going through the metal axle in the back. Step 14, we have, <clears throat> you got your decals going on here, and you get the choice of the GT or GTA emblem. So even the decals have different things. Your hood with these vents put in. I know some people call these Mickey Mouse vents at one point. Uh, anyway, there's your headlights. So you get four of them, quad headlights. And a grill emblem that goes right in the center, as well as license plate decals, five, six, seven, or eight. So you get multiple choices on your license plates. Step 15 shows us the back with our rear panel trim gluing across the trunk lid, and then taillight bezel and the taillights as well as the bumper, and of course we get a choice of four different license plates. And finally, one thing that I always found cool with this era of AMT model kits is you get the color codes, step 16. So here they will tell you, this should actually be the first step, <laughs> so you know how to paint your car as you're gluing it together. But anyway, there's colors like springtime yellow. This is on the exterior, so body colors. Silver frost. Um, can't read that from here, but it's a gold color, silver, vintage burgundy, you know, and all these different colors. And then the interior colors uh, that go with it. And then there's recommended and also available. So for instance, here's Acadian blue and the recommended color was blue for the interior but then you could also get a black as uh, optional it says note c note code numbers refer to ford factory color numbers your local auto parts store or body shop may provide assistance if you wish to match colors to factory specifications so you can find all these colors they give you like blue is code 82 uh, ivy gold is code 88 so you could color match these at a Ford dealership or something to that something to that effect so there's our instructions for this great Ford Galaxy and now let's take a look at the plastic components now the first thing we're going to look at in this model kit is of course our body and now I've got one of these that I built a long time ago when I was young and I just wanted to show you the here, I'll just move this out of the way. The fit and finish of this kit, as you can tell, there's uh, no real big hood gap problems going on there. Let me just set this off for a minute. There's our engine bay. Yeah, you can see uh, how chrome and everything will attach once you build your model. 
how nice this thing really is. Keep it underneath here. See the great detail under there? Uh, one thing I noticed, maybe it fell off, I don't know, but my linkage is under here. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to steer this car if you got into it. <laughs> but anyway, and of course our red interior. Note how everything goes nicely together on this. So, moving the finished model off to the side, we now have our plastic kit here. Now, going back there, AMT molded in some roof support here that you need to remove, of course, with uh, your saw blades and your knives and whatever. There's also a support here for the front fenders so that when they molded this, it wouldn't, you know, make them bend in or the roof come down or anything. Note the, uh, there is a Fairlane script right in here on the rear fender and the door handles are molded solid. Now my model kit, I used some small drill bits to actually hollow out the door handle there, make it more realistic. But of course, if you are good at painting, you paint a little rectangle there and a smaller one here, and then connect them with a line there using silver paint. Look very nice. And of course, on the back, again, the Ford raised lettering, there's a little key right there and a spot for that chrome to go into. There is a seam line that runs along here as well as seam lines that are running up along your fender edges. Those of course you can remove. Um, then you got your windshield wipers here over this little grill and let's just see the fit and finish is still just as good. Bring the next mold up and of course it is hood sitting on there but anyway so there is our body and now let's take a look at some of our other plastic components all right what I'm gonna do is just pull pieces off the top of that big pile that was in the bag so here we have our chassis and you can see the nice detail in here it's got all the little wires and indentations as well as the brake cables for your parking brake and whatnot nice uh, fuel tank right here as well as our lower A-arms and front suspension components and then here we have our big exhaust pipes so there you can see all the nice crisp detail on there very excellent there is some flash so we'll have to take care of that with some sandpapers and knives and things and then here as you can see we have carpet and there is a square spot here you could get away without the col console in here and just have the uh, the gear sticks sticking out of that nice little bit of work in the engine bay a little peg here for your engine to mount onto and then looking at the exhaust pipes there's these little pegs in here which of course will align into the holes there there should be a few more up here uh, there so it'll all line up with your engine and everything when you build your model next up we have our engine components so we're starting off with the engine block and as you can see there's the portals drilled in for your cylinder heads as well as all the little rods for your rockers and uh, push rods for your valves <laughs> so here's your oil pan your front water pump the alternator and pulleys, well the alternator gear here in your pulleys, um, oil filter, oil filler, uh, your coil, your fuel pump, your distributor, your uh, starter motor and the brake master cylinder as well as your cylinder heads, the upper radiator hose, the battery, the front engine cover and now this is your standard transmission there's the two horns the automatic transmission the drive shaft the automatic pedals the um, intake manifold the fan and your right and left engine manifolds and then here you have your cylinder heads <laughs> oh boy now you may be wondering where the shift linkage is 
they scotch taped mine into the bottom of the engine pan here. I guess it fell off somewhere. But see, look, you even have the frost plugs molded into the engine. And a very nice, sort of simplistic detail compared to some of the engine blocks that Monogram put in the past. But a person could actually have this sitting on a bench with all the parts put out on a table for, of course, a garage diorama. And then take a look at the transmission. A nice detail in there. I'm glad my camera can focus. As well as the standard transmission looks like it could actually operate. So again, very nice work done by that original AMT Ertl crew. Now the next tree is quite a mixture of different components, a lot of them being suspension components, others being uh, under the hood components, engine bay components, and then a little bit of our interior here. So let's see what we got. We have our wheels, our wheel backs, the two four barrel carburetors sitting here. Um, of course we don't have a manifold for the four barrels. However, there's our front steering linkage, our left and right rear springs, the coil springs for the front, our differential in two pieces, the shock absorbers, the front spindles, and the, was that the upper control arms? And then there's our under the hood details, splash aprons, uh, firewall, there we have our windshield washer fluid and overflow for the radiator, I believe. Uh, firewall, drive shaft, front engine cross member, and our dashboard. So let's just bring this up into the camera a little bit. Let's turn around, let's look at our dashboard here. <laughs> okay, you can see the nice detail in there. With all the radio knobs and the speedometer, as well as an opening glove box. How many of you guys had one of these 66 Fairlanes? So my sister had a 1972 Mercury Comet and the entire dashboard was made out of iron. <laughs> and I can't remember if it had the glove box or not, but I just wondered, um, were these dashboards made out of iron? If, or steel, I should say, not iron. Write in the comments down below and let me know. Okay, now look at the, the cool detail on the front of this differential cover here. Very neat. Drive shafts is off center a bit. Now, seeing as it's off center, I do believe this is a Ford 9 inch rear end, if I remember correctly. Help me out, guys. <laughs> Confirm. Anyway, there's uh, the carburetors, and they do have the jets molded in there, so lots of nice detail. And uh, again, more excellent detailing on those front fender aprons. These do not have the adjustable brace up top. However, you turn it over. Oh, there's not too much to see, just the rear um, rear wheels. There is a lot of flash here. You have to let's see. Can you see that? Yeah. So you have to remove that from your wheel backs. But other than that, again, very nice. Very nicely detailed. Now we get our interior components. There's our right and left hand side door panels, and what's nice about these is they're molded flat. So the AMT in the mold process could get a lot of fine detail on here that you can't really get with the older style interior tub buckets, like on the 66 Ford Galaxy, which will be in an upcoming review here. So there's our center console here, which go on the floor, the hood, and our front bucket seats with, of course, the front and back of the seats. And here's our rear bench seat. Now, one thing that happened somewhere is that the steering wheel came off. So the people at AMT put it inside this plastic Ziploc bag, or not Ziploc, but bag, and sealed it here with their machine. So looking at the back here, you can see there's a lot of mold marks on the bottom of this hood. You'll have to take those out with your number 16 hobby blade, but it should be relatively easy. Again, have a nice look at those door panels. Very nicely detailed, as well as the center console has some interesting bits to it. Some little glove box here that opens up. Uh, maybe it's not a glove box, but anyway. Nice molding on the seats. Great crisp detail. Again, just a testimony to 
how excellent this AMT model kit was. Now we get into my most favorite part of all these model kit buildups, and that of course is the chrome part tree. And this chrome is in really excellent shape. You can see from the alternator sitting here, as well as the bumper, the little bar that goes underneath the hood, the front grille, and front bumper of course, your rear tail lights, all the little Ford GT and GTA emblems are chrome. Oh, an auto decal. I made a mistake in the earlier bits. There's our air cleaner, and of course our factory Ford wheels, and your choice of standard shift or automatic. There's a little piece of chrome that goes across the back of the trunk lid. There's the, the centerpiece here, and of course our engine hood scoops. So now let's just bring this up into the camera. You can see that great detail on the grill. A little bit of Citadel black wash inside there and wipe it off with the rag and you get an excellent look to this thing. There's our wheels there, nicely chromed. Our air cleaner has the paper uh, element in it, which is really cool, as well as the hood scoops there and the little Ford emblem. Let's just see. I know the camera won't pick this up very well. But there is the GT GTA emblem inside these little squares. You just got to look really carefully for it, clip out the right ones. Uh, again, very nicely done by the original workers over at AMT. Jumping Jack Flash, here's your glass. <laughs> okay, so we have our front little headlights here. They'll pop into your grill, the side windows, the front or the rear window and of course a front windshield and you'll notice that it also has the visors the sun visors molded in which is a nice touch for AMT to put that in there and uh, really makes it quite unique you could also put in side glass if you have some clear evergreen sheet styrene all right and here are the final pieces to this model kit we have of course our metal axle and our rear tail lights, which have a nice detail molded in here. There's a little raised square, so you can put in your white um, reversing lights. And the most cool part about this is the Firestone uh, Wide Oval Super Sport tires. Now these were especially made in the late 90s from AMT, because prior to this a lot of the AMT tires were Goodyear Polyglass GTs. This was the first time that AMT made brand new Firestone tires. These ones also have a ring cut into them so that you could put a white wall tire in there for easy painting or even a red line tire which was a popular 60s tire at the time. And they also have a beautiful tread pattern on them here. And I don't know how well you can see this. There goes the camera. Anyway, it does have the Firestone raised lettering on here, as well as the uh, wide oval Super Sport down around in some of this writing. So again, very excellent tires, and they make good additions to any of your other AMT kits. Here's our decal sheet for the 1966 Ford Fairlane. Now, you can't really see it in here, but you get a red stripe, a white stripe, and a black stripe for your car. So, of course, you can use the red stripe on white or black cars, the white stripes on black cars or dark greens, the dark colors, and, of course, your black stripes on yellows and whites and that sort of thing. Then here we get our 390 air cleaner sticker, as well as the caution fan sticker. These are water slide decals, of course. 1966 license plates. These are sort of a museum style, I'd like to think. You know, if you went to Harris Auto Museum or something like that, you would see these kind of license plates on the cars. Then we have a Ford Oval, blue oval license plate, as well as Super Ford Magazine. And then Illinois 1966 Ford license plates. So a very cool decal sheet for the 1966 Ford Fairlane GT GTA. And that concludes our look at the 1966 Ford Fairlane GT GTA by AMT Ertl. RC2. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Monster Hobby's What's in the Box, and tune in next week when we will be unboxing the 1966 Ford Galaxy, the big boy. And I know that you don't want to miss that great video, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. 
pound that notification bell so that when that video uploads, you will be the first to know about it. And let's get this video up to 100 likes so that anybody interested in this model kit can find it out there. And until next time, see you at the Ford dealership.